All right, well, it is uh, 6 p.m. here, Eastern Time. Uh, so thank you all for, uh, for joining us tonight for a discussion on Harborside Master Plan, um, a, a really important waterfront project in the city of Plattsburgh. My name is Bob Murphy, uh, planner uh, with Barton and LaJudas. And with me tonight is uh, Lee Jones, who you'll see momentarily um, to, uh, to help steer us through tonight's, tonight's proceedings. Uh, you may notice that you are all muted and we'll get more into that in a minute with the ground rules, but there will be plenty of opportunities for you to contribute and ask questions uh, for the panelists we have tonight. I uh, hope to be uh, out of here a little after seven um, to get you back to your evenings, but we really appreciate any input that you can provide now or, or even later. Um, this this uh, meeting tonight will be recorded and posted uh, for viewing later on if you wanna review later or tell your friends who may have missed tonight. So. Thanks again for joining us. So a little bit of the ground rules. Uh, you'll notice the functions in the Zoom chat here tonight um, with the Q&A box. That's where we want to steer you to, to ask any questions. Um, you can ask them at any time throughout tonight's proceedings, whether I'm presenting or any of my colleagues, um, but that's where we want you to um, post any uh, questions. There's also the chat box, um, which uh, we'll also direct you to later on. Only the panelists can see what is entered um, in the chat box. Um, so we'll be able to see what you enter to our prompts later on, but we'll, we'll direct you to that function later on as well. Um, like as I mentioned, uh, everyone's going to remain mute, muted throughout the uh, presentation. Um, we'll be fielding all questions, even the ones we don't get to respond to uh, live, we'll be responding to with subsequent um, postings of those questions and answers on the project website, which we'll, we'll show you later on. Um, as, as, as I mentioned, there'll be a recording available for those who can't make it. So a little overview of what we're going to go over tonight. Um, just an introduction of the project team and the project itself, some of the background schedule, uh, what the goals and objectives are of the Harborside Master Plan project. Uh, we'll go through an existing conditions uh, and precedent images uh, discussion, which really will hopefully um, get you all in the right frame of mind for understanding what we're talking about when we say Harborside, as well as what we are encouraging you to give us feedback on for future opportunities, whether that's um, uh, different park equipment, different um, recreational equipment, uh, different um, other facilities that could be located um, at the Harborside site. Then we'll get into some regional context, talk about how Harborside relates to other projects going on within the city and other destinations and activity nodes, uh, for instance, like uh, SUNY Plattsburgh. Then we'll get into our preliminary uh, uh, concept plans um, how we've developed them, what inventory information we've gathered, and just some really general um, high level um, explanations of, of our overall concept plan that we hope that your input will help us refine um, into more meaningful detail. And then we'll go over next steps and future opportunities for you all to um, participate in this process. So, some introductions um, our Harborside Master Plan Committee is really guiding um, the direction of this process. Um, as you can see, we have um, members who represent a wide array of groups um, that relate to Harborside in the city um, and a mix of both um, public sector employees and um, members of the public. Our uh, consultant team is led by Barton and LeJudas, myself, um, Bob Murphy, um, Robert for uh, formalities, uh, but also my uh, colleague, Lee Jones, who um, actually, Lee, I'll let you introduce yourself right now. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Lee Jones. I'm a landscape architect with Barton and LeJudas, and I've been working with Bob and the city and the master plan committee on this project. And we'll walk you through some of our thoughts as we move forward in this presentation. Thanks, Lee. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get back to you in, in a little while. Um, also on our project team, is Brian Jones of Albertine and Courier, Todd Poole with Forward Planning, um, Paul Warner with Hadley Exhibits, 
they each have different expertise that they bring to our project team with uh, the landscape architecture component coming from Aubertine and Courier with Brian Jones, uh, fiscal impact kind of ground truthing um, on our proposals, uh, basically, um, uh, basically double checking the feasibility of our proposals uh, under the auspices of, of Todd Poole. And then Hadley Exhibits um, brings expertise in museum visitor center programming that will be instrumental in the development of an environmental learning center that is a critical component of the Harborside Master Plan. Uh, also, uh, I would be remiss uh, not to mention the funding source for over half of, of this project, uh, the Department of State, um, and our representative there is uh, Barbara Kendall. Um, you'll also see a link, which is probably maybe pretty small, depending on the size of screen you're using, uh, for the project web page. It is underneath the, the Department of Community Development. You'll see a link for Harborside Master Plan. And as I mentioned, this presentation will be available to everybody um, uh, following uh, uh, tonight's uh, event. And you'll be able to click on that link to get to the project page as well. So project schedule, as you can see, we're pretty early on in the process. Uh, we really anticipate something like a 12 month uh, project cycle on uh, where we started it, the project in uh, the summertime of this year uh, with a committee kickoff. We've had a couple committee meetings thus far and really have started to understand the um, where the committee sees the site going, what constraints they see, what opportunities they see. And now we want to turn some of that information over to you at this uh, public workshop number one. Next, we'll have a community survey, uh, which will be another opportunity for you all to uh, weigh in. Uh, even if you're here tonight, you want to weigh in through that survey as well, or tell your friends, hey, we, we have a survey coming out. Uh, uh, the project team's looking for your input at Harborside. We'll also have two more uh, public workshops, which we anticipate to be in person. Um, a different format from tonight. Uh, those would be later on in the winter time, focused um, on more detailed uh, concepts, as well as the Environmental Learning Center and, and what that could be. And then uh, another uh, public workshop later in the spring, uh, really showcasing our final designs. We'll then have a draft plan uh, in early summer, be able to submit for grant funding of some of the implementation uh, of this Harborside Master Plan at that time, finish the uh, the final uh, version of the plan shortly thereafter, and then await uh, funding announcements in uh, December next year for implementation funding. So that's um, a little snapshot of the um, life cycle of this project and how it really leads uh, into implementation. So I've been doing a lot of talking about kind of ground rules and uh, who everybody is, but what is this project itself? Well, Harborside is a uh, is an area that really extends from the marina around uh, kind of this the horn or around Cumberland Bay and up uh, the Saranac River to the NYSEG site. You'll see um, in this graphic here, and I'll get into a larger version later, um, two different um, uh, components to that to Harborside. And what you hear us reference the Harborside Lakefront and the Harborside Riverfront. I'll get more into that in a minute. But um, the core of the site uh, is right um, adjacent to the Water Resource Recovery Center, or facility rather, um, off Green Street, also accessible um, by Dock Street. Um, it was a former rail yard and fuel storage area. Um, so the use is now transitioning from more an industrial use to a recreational use. Also, this project evolved out of the um, local waterfront revitalization program developed for the city a number of years ago and recently re recently updated um, and as one of the implementation projects. What, what does the city do with this um, critical um, and really high profile waterfront location pretty close to its downtown? Some of the goals uh, that we hope to achieve uh, before getting to that implementation is ad the identification of key um, community and economic drivers um, that can come out of this, um, the future of Harborside. Uh, not only do we want this to be um, what it is now, which is largely a, a parking area to, to get into the water, um, but more of an, a destination in itself. And it's, it's really a, a unique look um, at how we can um, 
capitalize rather than hide um, the water resource recovery facility. Um, the other thing that, that needs to come about as a result of this process is um, really reinforcing the connections to the site from elsewhere uh, in, in the city. Uh, there are a number of barriers, um, both psychological and physical, to get to the site. How do we overcome them? How do we um, make this a place that people see easy, that's easy to get to from wherever you are? Um, and lastly, there's that environmental learning center that we talked about briefly earlier. This is where they really can, the site can really take advantage of the water resource recovery facility, which is a critical um, facility in its own right for the functioning of the city in the area. Just quickly wanted to also talk about the LWRP program, which is, stands for Local Waterfront Revitalization Program, uh, which again has funded this, this process. And you might say, why uh, would this um, particular project be funded under that program? And it really checks off all the boxes uh, for the LWRP pro um, program in that it is a waterfront um, location um, on a, uh, what's called a designated inland waterway, Lake Champlain, obviously. Um, and th these are, this is a stereotypical site that the state wants to uh, invest in. Um, our waterfronts across New York State um, were programmed really for industrial uses during the course of the 20th century. The state has seen this, um, the need really to, to change those uses uh, to more of recreation um, uh, and community development uh, and, and by extension, economic development. So the, the, the sites that we'll talk about here tonight really epitomize uh, those goals. So um, with that said, um, we'll, we'll give you a little tour of the site um, as well as give you some primers before we get into some uh, discussion on um, what, what the possible futures of the site could be. But before we do that, I see we did get uh, one question in the, in the Q&A um, asking how many participants we have. And, and right now we have um, 24 participants right now. So um, pretty good turnout so far. Hopefully some more trickle in. But, uh, um, you know, that's a good example of a question. So if you have any, any questions out there in the audience, uh, feel free to drop them in to the Q&A and we will get to them at, at different points throughout the presentation. Just put them in whenever, whenever they come to you. So with that, I will turn it over to Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Hi, everyone. Um, and as Bob just said, as I walked you through some existing condition photos, and some precedent images, um, put your questions in the Q&A and then we can address those at the end. Um, so we're first gonna start with, I, you know, some of you may be more familiar with the site than others. So our project team, obviously some are um, located in the city of Plattsburgh with our committee and city staff. And then our BNL team have visited the site multiple times last summer and prior to that. Um, and have taken photos. And we've also gotten images from Google Earth to study the site and to see historically how it's developed over time. And then after looking at sort of the site itself, we are going to just take you through some precedent images. And as Bob said, this is really a conceptual level of thinking about this site and this project area and what sort of amenities the city might want to incorporate into this. What are the attributes that exist on the site right now that we want to enhance, really sort of looking at the opportunities and constraints and looking at what sort of the possibilities are. And the key to this through sort of our questions in the Q&A and you incorporating thoughts into this chat box as well as our follow-up survey and our public meetings going forward is the input from you, the residents, the users to really let the city and our project team know what you want to see and how you want to see these project sites developed. So this is looking at the, um, the Harborside Lakefront property. And again, we'll just take you through some photos. This is not all of the photos um, that we have. We have a, a more robust set of existing condition photos, if you're not familiar with the site, that will, be, um, will exist on the city's website for this project, where this full presentation will be um, 
will allow you, will be there for you to access. Um, so these are a couple of photos looking at pedestrian access onto the site. The photo on the left is looking at the pedestrian bridge coming down from Cumberland Avenue. Um, and then throughout the site, there are formal pathways that are paved, as well as just footpaths of people accessing the lakefront and the riverfront. And then there's also boat access on the site, places to launch your boat, places to launch your kayak. Um, also, there's also places for you to access the site from a boat with the marina and the boat harbor. These are just some site features that currently exist there, a memorial, as well as a small public event space, which again, you can see one of those informal paths in that photo. And these are just, again, some existing site amenities with existing trash receptacles, a place to store your kayaks, some existing benches, um, and existing interpretive signs for you to learn about the water resource recovery facility, existing lighting, and again, existing um, trash receptacles for dog waste as well. So with these sort of existing features that exist on the site now, It'll be either while well, some of these we might expand on the use of them, or we might um, incorporate new ones that then get expanded on the design of the site. Again, this is just us understanding the current site and then going forward with other ideas. This, the building on the left, is where the existing farmers market um, happens. And then on the right, Bob had already mentioned the water resource recovery facility. The picture on the bottom right is the existing facility and what. The, a current project that's existing in the city right now is working with um, Abertine and Courier Architects and really enhancing the facade of this building. This water uh, resource recovery facility is not going anywhere. It's a prominent piece on this lakefront, the, the lake, the harborside lakefront. And so the whole idea the city is doing is to improve the facade, the improve the aesthetics of it so that you know, really the rest of this Harborside project can grow from it and embrace it as opposed to trying to hide it. This is again, this is above the site, as you can see on the two little key maps. We have a historic building at the corner of uh, Green Bridge in Peru. Going down Green Street along that red building is how a lot of people access the farmer's market right now and access the site through there. And then the existing Amtrak station, which again is above the project, the lakefront site. Um, and then from there though, you can go down Dock Street to access the site. And then looking at the riverfront site, the nice egg site, two ways to access that site. The photo on the left is coming from the east side of the lake and coming on the um, access from the road or sidewalks. And then across the Saranac River is the new pedestrian bridge that'll get you onto the nice egg site as well. So again, that's what sort of is existing there now. And then we sort of looked again, working with um, similar sites of what's happening on similar sites to this waterfront, riverfront sites, lakefront sites, and working with the city of maybe some addition, additional resources and amenities that we wanna incorporate into these two project areas. This first one is looking at, obviously, there are two amazing amenities here, Saranac River and then Cumberland Bay and Lake Champlain. Amazing water, water areas. And just looking at enhancing, whether it's the access to them or you know, viewing of them and just sort of embracing them and allowing users to interact with the river and the lake more. And then looking at the city as a whole now and really looking at SUNY Plattsburgh and the, muse the art museum that exists in SUNY Plattsburgh, as well as sculptural pieces within the campus. And just sort of looking at making connections, which Bob will talk to on a later slide, but really looking at making connections with this project site in the city as a whole. And just looking at other waterfront properties that have really incorporated public art to soar, whether it's tell a story or to make connections through other parts of the city. And with that same idea is really looking at incorporating the history of the site and even the education of the site, whether it's the um, environmental aspects of the river and the lake and the health of it, and also the how this site has developed over time. 
and really incorporating that possibly into site features, whether it's on the ground plane, in um, you know, into seating walls or things like that, just to sort of not turn away from the history, but really embrace how the site has come to here and how it will continue to develop and its role within the city fabric itself. And just again, additional examples of incorporating educational and historical features within the overall design. This is again, I showed you that we show that image of the one smaller public area, but really looking at you know, this, how the this, this city can use this site and whether it is you know, for large public events and possibly creating spaces that are defined areas for public events, but then can also be used um, freely at other times throughout the year. Again, looking at the pedestrian pathway. So there's one, there's exist, an existing asphalt loop trail. Well, not even a loop trail, but an existing asphalt trail down there now, as well as some, you know, footpaths. We're really looking at that concept of incorporating how is the best way for pedestrians to circulate throughout the sites and how to connect pedestrians to other parts of the city and looking at a full pedestrian circulation um, network. And as well as seating areas, there's again, we showed some benches down there. We're really looking at different levels of seating, whether it's informal boulder seating or you know, benches with backs, benches without backs, incorporating different types of seating to allow for it to be inclusive for all users and also just to for different uses within the site. Another important part is signage. Again, we're talking about the connection of this site to the city overall. And so really looking at wayfinding signage is what we call this of, you know, an overall project site or an overall project map of the city and where it connects to other key points along the lakefront or along the riverfront or within downtown or up to SUNY Plattsburgh, the campus. And just, you know, in this sort of precedent of what this signage will look like can either be taken from existing signage within the city, or this project itself could sort of start a new precedent that then would bleed out into the city and beyond. Again, with this project, we are always looking at it of how it fits into the fabric of the city and not just as a project into itself. Again, we know the farmer's market is down there now and just sort of looking at this as a important part this is an important market for the city and it wants to continue to grow and sort of looking at other opportunities within that area, which is also where we are talking about an educational center within the water resource facility and really looking at creating a possible, you know, an expanded pedestrian area on that portion of the site. And with all these, we'll walk you through overall project maps a little bit later in the presentation, which will sort of start putting where some of these ideas could possibly fall within the existing sites. And again, there's an existing stage down there and really looking again at what, how the city, how the residents, how the visitors want to use this space and is a more formal amphitheater or stage or performance shell warranted on this site. As well as a playground and play areas for kids, whether it's um, a playground area, a splash park area, really what is needed in this area of the city. And it could be more formal play like we just showed or more natural play, just the use of existing fallen trees or boulders. We obviously have some existing beach there and really expanding on what nature has given us to make it informal um, play areas for kids. And again, the, I feel like the hammock craze has gone crazy. I don't know if SUNY Plattsburgh, the campus there is littered with the college kids hanging up their um, hammocks anywhere. So it could just be an incorporation of a tree grove that they're hanging up on trees as they see, or there's been a lot of you know, shade structures that just using those posts as areas to incorporate to hang a hammock. Um, just sort of looking at how do we want to use this space? And again, giving users a full range of different types of ideas to attract a lot of different type of users. 
And again, everything we've been talking about, I know that we talked about this as two sites, the Harborside Lakefront and the Harborside Riverfront. So a lot of the, all the things we've been talking about really can be on both. This is a specific idea that the city has, is thinking of just from precedents of other municipalities that have done this, that have rivers, of really looking at focusing on river recreation and the possibility of incorporating hydraulic system to sort of control the flow of the river. And, you know, it's already, there are a proposed development already on the Saranac River in the downtown area, and there are existing pathways and pedestrian bridges. And in this project, we are proposing those to continue and to further the pedestrian connections. And all that would allow for viewing along this river to really incorporate it again into the city fabric that it's not just something to look at, but it's something to use and really extend the recreation onto the river itself. And again, with that same idea is the fishing of really not just looking at the river, but using the river and the lake and the bay as a resource and providing opportunities. I know informal fishing is already happening, but really providing fishing areas and different levels of them for users. And finally, this the incorporation of the possibility of an incorporation of a dog park. Um, and I know that there, there, these exist in other parts of the city and it feels like in most municipalities, this is becoming a norm that a dog park and a really nice dog park as we all love our dogs really gets incorporated into designs. So again, with all this, all these precedent images we've shown, this isn't saying, it's, this is like really where the feedback is needed of what do the users want? What do the residents want? What do the visitors want? And again, you know, looking at the two different sites, the lakefront and the waterfront of, you know, does it make sense to have something in one place as opposed to the other? And these are the things that we'll start talking about a little more detail when we look at the, the project site specifically. Well, thanks, Lee. Um, that was a good rundown of things to consider uh, just in the abstract, um, as well as some of the, the site photos uh, to get uh, folks' feet on the ground, so to speak. Um, right now, we also wanted to stop quickly to, to answer any questions that came in the Q&A, and there were a couple. Um, one question asks, does the site include Sailors Beach and the warehouses on McDonough Street? Um, and the answer is uh, no to the first and partially to the second. I'll, I'll get more into that in a minute when we go through the regional context here in the next couple slides. And then the other question that came in um, asks, has anyone thought or discussed safety for the sites? Uh, for example, emergency phones, lighting, cameras, et cetera, to, de to deter crime, dumping, and littering? Um, that's a good question. Um, we have considered it at, at this point, of course. Uh, we're still really early on in, in the process here for, for laying out um, concept plans, but those are all important features. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, it currently is a, is a relatively secluded site so that it can invite some of that sort of uh, negative behavior. Um, so making sure that it is safe, well lit, and used will help to deter um, those activities. Do you have anything else to add there, Lee? No, I was just going to say, again, once we develop it and the more it's used, it's probably the biggest deterrent. But yes, we'll be working with the city absolutely to um, incorporate that sort of within the design and then sort of how the city wants to approach that. And then one last question um, regarding Sailor Beach again. Um, uh, uh, the question asks, would we talk about including Sailor Beach at some point during the presentation? Um, unfortunately, the, the geographic scope is, is pretty set right now for, uh, for this particular project, but we'll be um, discussing ways to um, kind of build off of uh, some of the, the features of, of Sailor Beach um, and not replicating them at, um, at Harborside at either of the locations. So, um, good question, and we'll get more into the, the regional context here next. Yeah, and we also we... do know the, um, that the trail that goes down to Sailors Beach, of really looking at making sure that that does connect to our Harborside, the Harborside Lakefront Park. Because um, again, like we said, this is not just a project of its own, it's looking at making sure these connections exist to other amenities already existing in the city. So before we move on to that, context discussion, Lee. I did have a couple questions to um, follow up with you all in the audience on, and I want you to use the chat function if you can. 
um, for this feature. So um, first question I want you to respond to, if you could, is what assets do you find most important at Harborside? You know, we just went through a whole bunch um, of examples. Um, how do you use Harborside? Um, what do you find, um, you know, things that you want to keep, things you want to build on that are there now? And feel free to enter them right into the chat. We'll go through, we'll, we'll verbally go through them with everybody else. Uh, we have uh, one comment is the pedestrian trail. Um, one is uh, to enjoy it, enjoy the views of the lake uh, from a beach chair. Um, another comment is fishing access along the river. Uh, these are all great. Um, let's see, uh, would like to see uh, affordable boat rental um, access. Um, that's a good point too. And while you're answering these, something else that would be great is if you don't use the site right now, let us know that too, that you don't even use it now, just to understand who, who uses it and who doesn't. I'd like to see more access to the lake, um, the, the performance stage, the farmer's market, the kayak access that's currently there. Those are, um, that was a comment response as well. Swimming for kids is something they'd like to see, um, you know, similar to uh, the question about Sailor's Beach. So thank you for those comments. Um, I'm gonna now turn your attention to, um, you know, highest priority opportunities that you see for the site. So looking forward, um, what, what's the, what activities come to mind? And we've already discussed some um, kayak access, um, performance stage, what else? Oh, that's an interesting one, boat access up the river to downtown. Um, you know, I, it, I, I think that it's a possible uh, solution. You know, they're fighting the current a little bit, but um, it's not always, uh, uh, it's, it's not impossible. Um, another comment is uh, more lake access. Um, and I guess as a follow-up to that, if I could for the, that comment, or do you mean physical access, visual access, or both? More physical access, okay. Um, another comment we had included the, the, the learning center that we briefly discussed earlier, a splash, splash feature. That was one of the precedent images I know Lee showed. Um, and then we also have a comment here for a playground, as there are none uh, very close to downtown. This could be a good location for that. And, and perhaps some, some public access um, um, dock facilities um, so that um, it can be more for public use as opposed to those uh, who, who pay. Um, and then this is a kind of a good uh, touchstone to, to move on to the next question, but the last comment here is making it a destination point for lake users uh, like Burlington um, uh, to attract folks from Burlington as well as uh, Canadians further north on the lake. So one last question, um, facing harbor side um, in the chat here, I'd like you to respond to is what's the biggest constraints that you see uh, for the future of Harborside. We talk about making this transition from an industrial use, industrial past to, you know, an, a kind of an informal parking area. There's the performance stage. We've now got some more um, uh, shape um, to the site with the farmer's market there. Uh, what are the other concerns? Um, there's a good, a, a good comment. Lake level, um, obviously as a, as a waterfront parcel, um, it is pretty low. Um, and I can speak from, from my uh, experience at the site, uh, it, water can certainly puddle up there pretty quickly um, with, its, with its low location. So we'll have to take that into account with any hardscape um, designs as well as flood um, uh, mitigation efforts. Another constraint is um, road access to the area. Uh, as we talked about, there are the two um, roads getting into the site, Green Street, very confined space, 
not much room for pedestrians, um, not very good sight lines for bicycle for um, bicyclists or motorists. Um, there's also the um, railroad line that it crosses. You know, currently there's a difficulty accessing the uh, the lake uh, to put your feet in, for instance. Um, and then also a cohesive and shared vision. And that's what we hope to do with this plan. So um, that, that's, that's, that's what we need your help in putting together. And then uh, the last comment here uh, we have is uh, there's, again, kind of reiterating that there's a, a, a lack of informal pedestrian access to the lake. Um, also, on the, on, as an aside, um, food truck area could be could be a possibility for the site. This was a comment as, and as well as uh, artist studio um, space. So um, thank you for those comments on these uh, on kind of the big picture strengths, weaknesses of the site. So with that, uh, I'm gonna go briefly into the, the regional context and then stop again for questions. So if you have questions, feel free to, to pop them into the chat and we'll respond to them as we just did. But a brief discussion of the regional context and stakeholders. Um, we, we talked about in the beginning how connectivity is really crucial. It's great to have this, this well-planned site, but if people can't get to it either physically or they don't intuitively know that it's, it's very accessible, it makes it a less utilized site and we don't want that. Um, as I mentioned, there, there are some difficult neighborhood links as we just talked went through in some of that discussion largely driven by the, the railroad lines and some of the street access points. Um, what we're gonna show you here in this next, these next couple slides is um, our general thinking as uh, other activity nodes to connect to within the city um, and other stakeholder groups to keep in mind. So we're gonna ask you your thoughts on these um, shortly thereafter, as well as stakeholder groups that um, we should, we need to reach out to directly to get their thoughts on, on, on the future of the site. So let me zoom in here so you can see a little easier. So this is our regional context map of the Harborside site. You see we have um, radii for one mile from the site, half mile from the site, and a quarter mile from the site. And the point we picked was roughly where the farmer's market um, is. Um, and you can see downtown is within a quarter mile of the site. Um, you have uh, Margaret Street here in, uh, here in yellow. You have um, these other, uh, the one-way streets emanating to and from downtown, taking you out toward the hospital area and um, SUNY Plattsburgh um, to, the, to the west. There's also um, the US Oval Green to the south and uh, Sailor's Beach even further south along the, the bike path um, that, that circles the lake. Um, you'll also notice that we've color, kind of color coded the two different sections here, as I mentioned, with the Harborside Lakefront, with, with this magenta color and the, the more purple violet color um, focusing on Harborside Riverfront. Some of the, these critical um, connections to these other uh, activity nodes and recreational destinations we, we depict here um, with the connections from Harborside uh, to the Wilcox Dock to Sailors Point Park, both on the, um, both on the, the lake. Um, further uh, to the north, of course, you have City Beach, which is the subject of uh, further grant funding uh, that the, the city is, is hoping for to arrive uh, later this year. Uh, connections to downtown, obvious. Um, that's the uh, the big connection. I know that members of the committee have iterated. Uh, we need to make this as an attraction to folks who are downtown, and for downtown to be an attraction for folks who visit uh, Harborside in the future. Um, here we see the connection between the lakefront site uh, and the riverfront site. That's going to be a critical piece, as there's this continuous um, uh, kind of corridor of recreational activity along the Saranac River. And of course, connections to the campus. Lee mentioned maybe um, some sort of unified themes between um, campus and, uh, and the, the Harborside area to try to connect um, not only students, but also faculty um, 
uh, to go to and fro. So uh, one pointed question um, on this, on the, the topic of regional context is what are we missing? Um, you know, what other destinations or activity nodes did we not show? Um, and I want you to, if you could uh, enter them in the chat. So we have, we have those to, to kind of make edits to our, um, our context map and our thinking um, as, as how we put the site together. And as you are all thinking of that and adding it in, we did get another question about really getting the public input and asking specifically, how do we plan on reaching the residents to get their input? Obviously we're doing that right now in this situation right now. And then the um, city itself on their website will have updates of this project as it continues to unfold. And as Bob mentioned earlier, we have two additional public meetings moving forward, as well as um, we're gonna have an online survey. And in addition on the city website with respect to this project, there is going to be a place where you can continue to add comments after this presentation. So, I mean, the best place to always start to gain where is this project at is to go to the city website. Well, thanks, Sue. That's a good, good point to make there. And, and um, before we, we get into this, uh, this free form question responses that you guys are entering, we have one other question come into the chat. And uh, it was, it had to do with this, the site needing to um, be more accessible to wheelchairs, strollers, wagons, and um, among our discussions with the with the committee has been making this a, a more family friendly um, uh, space. Uh, obviously, there's folks visiting the site now for not only events at this performing stage, but also, of course, the farmers market. Uh, one thing that's been brought up is how to, a way to make the farmers market even more attractive to to customers is to have event um, uh, equipment um, play areas for kids, so so it can be more of a family outing. Um, not just a shopping trip. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question to 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 ask there. So, um, well, and in terms of, the, of accessibility, that all of this will be. Now, uh, we talked about the range of seating and access to the river and access to the lake. All of those will be thought to be inclusive, and there'll be a range of accessible options, um, hopefully, to try to accommodate as many users as possible, if not all users. So, yes, that's an absolute. Um, key point of our thinking and of our um, of our design. So, um, turning our attention to uh, these destinations and activity nodes, we did have a, a couple of connected um, comments come in, having to do with uh, historical connections. Um, the uh, with with the, this area being really the theater for the Battle of Plattsburgh. Um, as well as other historical uh, elements of, of uh, the, the city uh, from a rail history, from a industrial history. Um, those elements, what we're gonna try to bring in um, to our design, uh, as Lee mentioned earlier a little bit, um, one of our initial thoughts was uh, how to incorporate that history in some of the hardscape that may um, go into the site, whether that be, um, you know, kind of paving, um, designs, sitable spaces, um, information kiosks, um, as well as some of the features of that environmental learning center. And we'll get more into that in a minute. Yeah, and in addition, there can be, can be something as simple as an interpretive sign that includes historic photographs and things like that. There's a wide range of things to incorporate the history of the site. And absolutely, we'll look to incorporate it if that is something that the users want to see, because I do always like trying to tell a story. And one last comment to mention um, is the uh, Bridge Street Corridor. Uh, we talk about connections. That's the main connection between um, downtown and the site. Um, there are some challenges there, and we hope that our um, master plan can point to some recommended solutions so that it's easier for folks in a car or on foot or on bicycle to get to and from the site. Um, easier than it is today. So um, one other question that I wanted to pose to you before we turn to uh, preliminary concept plans is stakeholder groups. And these can include neighborhood groups, social organizations, uh, service organizations like fire departments, um, 
Rotary clubs, um, you know, any recreational organizations, youth program organizations, um, who, um, what, what, what groups do we need to reach out to directly? We want to make sure that we include everybody in this discussion. So uh, we're, we're kind of leaning to you guys to tell us who you think we, we need to, to seek input from directly. A couple of comments that have come in include SUNY Plattsburgh, faculty, staff, and students. And do have a member of, of faculty on, on staff, and we'll, um, we'll try to use her as a, a conduit to um, gather more uh, input from the student body and other faculty as well. Boaters and fishermen. Yes, that, that is a good, that's a good point. You know, one of the main users now of the site are uh, folks for um, fishing events. Uh, and changes could affect how they utilize the site, and we want to get their um, opinion. That's that's a good point. New York State DEC. That's a good point as well. Um, you know, we talk about hydraulics in uh, the river. Obviously, DEC is going to have a uh, some thoughts on that. So um, as we kind of uh, more fully develop some of these concepts, we'll uh, want to um, bring them in uh, to kind of ground truth some of our um, concepts as well. Um, other, other groups that are mentioned in the chat include the Strand um, for input on arts and music, uh, you know, Trout Unlimited as, as um, referencing that um, uh, fisherman group especially, um, and then perhaps residents from outside the area. So. Um, those include Montreal residents in all their areas of Southern Canada uh, and Burlington across the lake um, to, to, to see what would make them want to visit and other state organizations, um, as well as the Lake Champlain Basin program. So thank you. Those are all um, good uh, recommendations and we'll look to bring them in as we enter the next phase of, of public engagement here. So. I'm going to um, start moving us along into the next phase of the of tonight's proceedings, um, which I think are probably the most exciting uh, from a presentation standpoint. Um, not quite as exciting as the poll uh, questions that we have for you later on as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lee. Go ahead. Um, again, looking at those precedent images we showed you earlier in our conversation to this point, we just want to look at the sites specifically and look at some of the things we noted on our visit there with, again, meeting with the committee already, looking at previous plans and the history of the site, and really taking sort of our initial, our site inventory and analysis of both of the sites, and then looking at um, sort of our preliminary concept plans. Again, looking at just sort of how can these sites be broken up and possibly developed moving forward. And I just wanna really stress, these are preliminary concept plans. These are just initial ideas. These are not um, set in stone. This is really for us to open up this discussion and get the public's input. And again, the city's input didn't really define their intent. And this again is just initial thoughts put on paper just for us to react to and to have this conversation go. And we'll look at both sites. We'll look at the Harborside Lakefront first. And so this is looking again at that site and really looking at as I said, the initial ideas, existing site conditions, constraints. Um, one of the biggest constraints shown in pink is the existing railroad that really separates this the lakefront site from the downtown and from the river site and from the adjacent residential um, neighborhood. Um, it's one of the biggest constraints we have. That, so it limits the access on Dock Street and Green Street. And again, something to stress at this point, this is like sort of throwing every idea on the table and really looking at as we move forward, what works and what doesn't work, whether that's within the city's full picture of how they wanna move forward as a city and develop and just sort of, you know, financially what's possible and things like that. But, you know, at this stage we're looking at, there's that existing pedestrian bridge over to Cumberland Ave, like we had mentioned earlier, the train tracks come over Saranac River in that area. So is there a possibility to possibly add a vehicular access there as well? Um, and looking at accessing the site from there as opposed to Green Street. 
Green Street itself is um, a narrow street getting us down onto the site. And it's an interesting intersection there at Peru and a room and where the historic building is. And just sort of looking at, you know, this sort of entrance to the site of how can we even start drawing in users there, sort of that site. And then in the other yellow dot is where the Amtrak station is. And that's where Dock Street comes down, you know, and just visiting the site and me not being from Plattsburgh. It's like, I don't even really know the site exists when I'm driving up through downtown on the upper streets. And so really looking at that street level, the higher street level of drawing users in at that point, and we think those are sort of key things to do. The other things we're showing here are, you know, existing pedestrian pathways, looking at for um, potential pathways are shown in yellow. The multi-use development that you see on the left-hand side in pink is already a project that the city is working on. And then, you know, looking as that development happens, ensuring that there is pedestrian access to the river along that area, you know, through a, a walkway to connect the Saranac Trail to the south and up to the um, existing monument park where there already is pedestrian access through there and along the river. Um, something else that we really noticed again, there are, while there are existing paths within the site, they aren't all connected. And, you know, just that idea of a loop path and having, you know, for whether it's for um, just exercise purposes and really creating a loop within the site to again, to, and to open up the access, a lot of you have already mentioned it. All along in the green area on the right, it's all overgrown. Um, you, the views, I'm sure the views are great in the winter, but then as springtime happens and through the summer, the vegetation grows up and really just sort of creating true open spaces. So we can see in the Cumberland Bay and Lake Champlain and across um, to Vermont. And just really, again, embracing this lakefront um, lakefront access and whether it's for not just boat access but like you're saying to get your feet wet to have access to sit alongside the lake fishing all these sort of things are things all these amazing amenities that exist right there that are not being utilized to their fullest potential currently um, and then again so now this is us taking it one step further of looking at how you know the, the area where we're showing right now active um, pedestrian zone in the brown. That's where the existing farmer's market building is across from the existing water resource recovery um, facility zone. And right now it is just an old um, industrial site and really looking at with the possibility of expanding that into a full pedestrian zone to expand off the use of the farmer's market. Maybe that's where the playground gets incorporated or uh, the spray park or the dog park. Um, but just really expanding on that and expanding pedestrian uses within this area. And that purple swath that sort of runs along the train tracks is maybe trying to pull the vehicular zone and the vehicular circulation through the site to the edge so that it does become more of a pedestrian site. And obviously there's parking down there now. We're not um, proposing to get rid of parking and that will be an important park, important part of the final design. But looking at, you know, again, the main vehicular circulation of just trying to separate it from pedestrian usage. The purple area is showing the possibility, something else the city is looking into is the possibility of a subdivision zone and a possible development down on the lakefront harbor side uh, area. And again, you know, having that be an overlapping uh, developed zone, whether it's a private development with public usage as well which as you can see those overlapping event zones of looking at our lake access zone and more of a passive recreation, you know, not as much, you know, activity and sports and playground, but more, you know, walking trails, access to the lake. Um, and again, separating these uses, but again, enhancing and expanding all the uses and expanding the trail to go around the water resource recovery facility to extend the access to the lakefront and then on to the river fund. And again, looking at this, the green, the big green dash lines is the connections into downtown. And the city is looking at that as doing another study of complete streets of really looking at bicycle and pedestrian access on these vehicular corridors. The goal again is just to expand the use and expand the connection from this site to downtown. And in both places, um, really enhancing and you know, with through signage and through connections of 
when you're in the waterfront, drawing you to downtown, when you're in the downtown, drawing you down to the waterfront. And again, with all of these same thoughts, you can see the lakefront site up top and the multi-use development we already discussed. And all of this then connects, you know, up the Saranac River to the NYSEG site. And again, this, the Saranac Trail is getting you to this site right now, but the dotted green line is sort of the extending these corridors further, extending the pedestrian connections into downtown and looking at shared use paths in the maroon dotted line so that bicycles can access this as well. And even looking at the at parts of, yet yeah, maybe there'll be shared use paths at times where bicycles and pedestrians share the path, but then when possible, separating those uses as well. And I know that there's informal access down to the river currently, but looking at, um, you know, making some more formal access like we showed in pictures before, whether it's a dock or a pier or access right down to the water. And you can see on the brown, um, the brown slashed line, those are existing steep slopes. So our access there, we're not gonna be able to access the river in that location, but it doesn't mean we can't have a walk way above the steep slope. And like we had mentioned before, if there ends up being recreation along the river, that's an amazing viewing spot to look down. Similar sort of things that we noticed here is the, you know, access, the views to the river opening those up and you know maintaining the vegetation on it, getting rid of invasives where possible so we can really open up these connections. And then looking at this nice egg site when it's finally cleared and it's finally cleaned up, maybe this is a place because it is sort of a blank slate, but this is where a lot of active recreation could possibly be sited, whether it be athletic ball fields, soccer fields, baseball fields, an indoor, you know, indoor and or outdoor ice rink or swimming facility, something that, again, you know, looking at the uses of we don't need everything that we want, like say we a dog park, where is the dog park more um, better sited? Is it here at this, you know, the nice egg, the waterfront, Harborside waterfront site, or is it down at the lakefront? And really, you know, we don't need a dog park at each of them most likely, and just sort of looking at how to define these uses. And again, just expanding, on that and taking these thoughts a step further is looking at defining the zones again. And really, again, the white pathway is showing a, you know, extending these existing pedestrian pathways to connect all of these sites that we're talking about that are currently not connected um, formally right now. And as I just mentioned, the possibility of turning this into an active recreation zone, with again, keeping what's along the river, along the water, more of a passive area to allow people to enjoy, just to sit there and enjoy it, as well as then have access when it's possible. And again, you can see we have little icons all through this. And as we mentioned before, this is our, you know, our presentation is an hour long, but these are all gonna be available to you to really look at these plans more closely and then to sort of continue to give us your feedback. Even if you think of something like a week later, a month later, just continuously giving us the feedback on the city's website will allow us to incorporate um, your thoughts and your ideas into our final um, recommendations to the city. Well, that was well said, Lee, and um, a lot of information. Um, and I, I know, you know, you all looking at this for the first time, it's a lot to digest. You know, we went, went through um, a lot of um, content over the last hour. So uh, again, as Lee just mentioned, if that stuff comes to you later on, use the, the comment function um, uh, on the project website to be able to, um, after you gather your thoughts, be able to provide us some more feedback. Um, you know, one of the things I like to, to mention uh, as we get into these public engagement um, uh, components of design, of site design, is that you know, Lee and I and, and Brian and the rest of our consulting team, we're, we're never gonna know the Harborside site, Plattsburgh, um, as well as you all who live and, and work and, and play there. So, you know, we can provide some input on th things we've seen work elsewhere, um, you know, different concepts of design and how they fit together, but you're ultimately gonna be the ones who can tell us what, um, what you think will work there and, and what won't. So um, we really bow to you in, in, this, in this part of the, the process and we, we really need your, your input here. Um, uh, so with that said, we do have a couple questions come in before we get into the, 
the last part of, of our presentation today. And um, one had to do with uh, the uh, um, uh, the city's purchase of the marina. Um, and as you might have seen in the previous in the last couple of slides, um, we do note that the, the city marina zone is, is there, but that's kind of outside of the, the harborside um, uh, master plan area. Of course, we, we need to be aware that um, that that um, that the that the marina is there. How does that interact with the rest of the site? Um, that's really the extent of of, our, of the marina's involvement in in the design right now. Um, another topic that came in had to do with the subdivision uh, zone area that um, is is really fully in the um, in the arms of the committee right now as far as what the committee and you all see for the future of the site. Um, but that is that is a consideration. So that's why we show it where we do um, on our on our very conceptual plan. Um, and lastly, the um, a question came in about four seasons uses uh, the winter time, obviously a big component of the year. Um, that has been a big discussion point at our, our couple of committee meetings we've had thus far. Um, how do we make it a site that is accessible in the winter for winter uses? Um, so we have been we have been kicking those around. Obviously, a splash pad is going to be difficult in the winter. So, um, but we know that, and and we we will have other uh, features planned that can be used in in all four seasons, or specifically in the winter. Anything to add there, Lee? The one thing I was just going to add also is our role. We obviously look to the residents and the users for their input of what they want to see here. But our other role is is also just to assist the city in what really is possible and what can happen engineering wise, all of that, you know, you might want something to happen, but it might not actually be um, possible. So that's sort of our other role too, is really taking these thoughts and looking at it on a design level and looking at the site things and what really is possible and begin to engineer it. Um, so we, do, we don't want to sit there and offer things or propose things that aren't uh, feasibly possible on these sites, given the site conditions. So our other role. Way to bring me down, Lee, with the <laughs> reality. <laughs> so, uh, you know, thank you all for uh, um, staying with us so far. We do have a kind of more engaging uh, component to feedback right now that we wanted to run through you for the last couple of minutes. That's a series of poll questions um, that we want to get your feedback on. It's a little different than the Q&A and the chat feature that you've been using so far. Um, a, a poll will, will pop up on your screen here in, in, a, in a moment. You'll be able to answer questions. Um, and as you see, they're, they're already um, present. Um, so the first couple questions have to do with um, active recreation and where we think um, those uh, active recreation should uh, be prioritized. And active recreation meaning um, more formalized athletic fields, basketball courts, skate park type um, activity, as opposed to maybe picnic areas, um, nature viewing, um, natural um, settings. Um, so the first question asks, how strong a priority should um, active recreation be at Harborside Lakefront? And the second one is asks the same question, but for the riverfront. So, so we have some answers coming in, but keep, um, keep uh, uh, making your selections, whether you see them as high priorities medium or low at each respective site. Um, at the, when we get just about everybody responding, we'll, be, uh, we'll share it with you all. And it goes back to what I was saying, you know, you don't need a soccer field on both sites, you know? I mean, I guess maybe you could say that you're the biggest soccer city in the world and that you do, but that's sort of what we're looking for is, you know, how to, where does it really make more sense to you um, between the two sites? So we've got just about everybody responding. Um, just a couple more to go. If you haven't um, made your selections yet, please do. Give it a couple more seconds. All right, let's um, let's post the results here for these uh, these first two. So um, you, you'll be able to see on the screen now um, that uh, it's, it's viewed at 61%, uh, a medium priority, active recreation, 
at Harborside Lakefront. Uh, 22% think it's a high priority and 17% uh, think it's a low priority. Uh, at the riverfront site, we see 56% think it's a medium priority, 33% uh, uh, think a high, and um, uh, just 11% think a low priority there. So, um, you know, uh, good information to have, not a clear breakdown, but uh, thank you for providing um, your feedback there. And then something that just came in through the chat is pointing out that there's a baseball field in the center of the city and that maybe we don't need an additional one at this site. And that's something obviously that we'll work closely with the city to identify programmatically what is required, you know, what is needed within the city to see what athletic fields, if any, are warranted at one or either of these sites. And then moving on to the, uh, the next set of, of poll questions, I believe. Um, we ask a question on whitewater recreation. Uh, this one being how strong of a priority uh, should whitewater recreation be for the lower Saranac? Um, what, what do you all see as the, the future of that in water activity? And you know, Lee, Lee went through a number of, uh, of examples elsewhere. Uh, around the country and around the world where we've seen this be uh, a really popular attraction somewhere, but does it make sense for Plattsburgh? That's, that's kind of what we want to hear from you all. So we'll give it a couple more uh, seconds here. So if you haven't um, had a chance to weigh in yet, um, please do, and then we'll, we'll share the results with you just like we did earlier. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, share the results here. So um, as, you, as you've all told us, you, you, you seem to think that 47% uh, of you think that uh, white water is a uh, high priority and 35% say a medium priority with 18% uh, uh, being a low priority. So overall, um, a, a pretty favorable opinion of, of it. Not overwhelming, but pretty favorable. And then again, a couple more um, items in the chat box about that this idea of whitewater rafting has been talked about for years along the river. And then it's just mentioned about considering um, slackwater access for more canoe friendly. The idea of the hydraulics and the whitewater rafting, it would not be continuous. It would be a controlled use of the river. And so I think all, all levels of access, canoe, kayak, whitewater rafting, tubing, would all be incorporated into the programming of the recreational use of the river. So yes, all of those would be um, considered. Good clarification, Lee. And let's move on to our next uh, set of questions. So um, this has to do with uh, prioritizing what elements would be, what, what amenities would make your experience at the farmer's market uh, a better experience. And so we list these same uh, different choices for each of the, the three polls you see on your screen. So pick your top priority under the first question, your second priority under the second question, and your third priority under the third question. You can scroll down to see all, all the, uh, the questions. So what is your top priority? What is your second priority? And what's your third priority? Um, you know, uh, as you compare playgrounds to splash pads, events and programming, views of the lake, um, you know, fitness and exercise activities, sitting areas, um, you know, a place for our uh, furry friends in the dog park. What, um, what are the highest priority uh, uh, elements for, for each of you? That's what we're trying to gauge here. This will help steer us um, into what, um, what, what priorities to put on each of these elements. So um, let's, uh, let's show the results here. So a pretty uh, wide array of top choices, the top two being events and programming and views of the lake. And I won't run down the whole list here. Um, second priorities, again, it's, it's pretty um, spread out with sitting areas and views of the lake being the top two second priorities. And then the third um, priority 
again, we have events and programming sitting areas being secondary um, uh, preferences for you all tonight. So, um, you know, thanks for your feedback there. So um, let's move on to the, the next set of questions. So exhibit features in the Environmental Learning Center. So we, we've talked about how that is going to be a site. That's one of the um, kind of the few um, pretty predetermined elements of this um, project, the Environmental Learning Center. What types of exhibits, um, what, what do we need to take into account with the design of the space? These are the kind, of in, the kind of input that we want now. And when I say water cycle and the WERF, um, that's kind of the, uh, the importance of water quality and how the, the WERF uh, helps, uh, helps the city get there. Um, and, and that would be kind of a living exhibit being right next to the WERF as well. Um, obviously, it has a big impact on the ecology of the river and the lake. Um, we've, we've discussed the importance of uh, history, um, both at the site specifically in the city overall and, it, and the site's importance uh, in the region's history. And then weather and climate, um, you know, all of these weather and climate actually have a huge impact on the site itself, um, both from stormwater uh, issues as well as um, uh, just storms along the, the lakefront as well. Yes, and there is there's multiple answers uh, that you can select there. So I'm, I'm sorry that there's there's just single choice. I'm sorry, but um, you know we know that there's a a, a desire for uh, multiple preferences, but we're trying to get a sense of what the most important um, elements are. So a couple more seconds. Get your answers in if you can. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll share the results there, um, and it 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 seems like uh, the highest priority being ecology of the river and the lake, followed by history. Uh, and then the, the water cycle and the wharf and weather and the climate. So um, that's good feedback for us. Um, and I, I know a number of you mentioned in the chat that, you know, it, it could be all four. So we, uh, we definitely intend to, to have a measure of all four there. So let's go to the next poll. So another series of questions here, and this has to do with connectivity and access. Um, and here we ask for a single choice for each. Um, how do you, um, how would you, most commonly access Harborside Lakefront, that's the area near the wharf, or Harborside Riverfront, which is the area by the, by the old NYSEG site. And I know many of you will say I, I access it both ways or many of these different ways, but what, what most commonly is what we're looking for. Couple of responses coming in, and and this will just help us prioritize, um, you know, uh, what changes we make to access, um, either pedestrian only or pedestrian bicycle access or vehicular access, uh, and where we need need to make those changes, where the highest priorities are. Um, we'll also ask this question to the larger audience uh, through the survey, um, but this will give us a good sense of, of where to begin. So waiting on a couple more. We'll give it another 10 seconds or so. So please uh, enter your responses if you can. All right, so let's, um, let's go ahead and share the, uh, the results here. Seems like Dock Street is the more common entrance point for Harborside Lakefront, just a little bit more than, than Green Street. And, and some people do access it um, using the Cumberland Avenue pedestrian bridge. Um, going down to Riverfront, the Riverfront portion of the Harborside site, um, pretty evenly spread out um, with actually a greater um, access pedestrian on, on foot uh, using the pedestrian bridges and the newly finished one um, at Durkee Street. So, um, that's good information that, that it's pretty equally spread there as well. 
So we'll move on to the, uh, I think it's the last set of questions. Uh, yes, it is. So um, the last question here, and, and this is a multiple choice answer. You can um, respond to all that apply. Uh, what types of features could be provided at Harbor Side that are missing or lacking in Plattsburgh right now? And they, and we, go ahead, Lee. I was gonna say, and that goes back to that comment about there are, we already have a baseball field. We don't need that down here. So really thinking of, you know, not repeating programmatic things if the city already has it somewhere um, in a close in close proximity. And these options include rec fields that we talked about earlier, exercise trails, and, and that exercise trails, um, for those who might not be familiar, are obviously uh, footpaths with different um, um, fitness elements, whether they're pull-up bar um, or other um, outdoor specific um, exercise equipment. Uh, so you can really kind of get a workout in just by walking along the trail of different features. Um, scenic views, uh, passive uh, recreation or picnic areas, canoe kayak access, fishing access, uh, uh, stage performance space, um, public art, uh, an event destination, and, and public education. So we've really kind of covered the gamut here um, of, of things that might be, you might see elsewhere in, in the city at different recreational sites different public sites, um, but where could um, Harborside fill, the, fill a void if there is any in any of these? So we're waiting on a couple of responses here still. A long list here, so you know we'll, we'll give you another uh, 10, 15 seconds or so you know, select all that apply. If, if they don't apply, that's that's good. We want to hear that too. So, um, all right. So let's um, let's take a look at the results here. Um, the big winner appears to be scenic views, and that makes sense. I mean, it's it's a very prominent lakefront position, looking out across the lake to the Green Mountains. And up and down the lake, that that's that makes sense. That it's it's some, this is this is a site that can accommodate those views. Um, we also have strong representation for kayak and canoe access uh, improvements, um, passive and picnic area recreation um, uh, as a as a desired element there. Public art um, as a way to to uh, maybe showcase or make a connection maybe between other public art institutions around the city. Um, and, and I won't go down the entire list here, but you see the, uh, the breakdown of, of what you all prioritize. So um, that's our last poll question for tonight. So thank you all for participating. Those will be very useful for us um, as we begin to finalize our, our survey to, to ask, the, uh, you know, ask the public again for, for similar uh, feedback. So you could tell your friends who might have missed tonight's um, event that they'll have an opportunity to, to weigh in on, on some of these topics through that survey in the coming months, uh, as well as the, the other um, public engagement opportunities uh, in likely in person uh, later in the winter and in the spring. So that's it, we'll bring things to a conclusion. For next steps, um, well, you know, our uh, whole- We've got a couple of comments in the chat that we haven't gotten to yet. I don't know if we wanna do those now. Because they relate um, to what we were just talking about, but let's uh, let's go for it. Uh, <laughs> well, one is a great comment, just sort of talking about um, phasing this project and what our master plan will be. The whole concept behind this master plan is to try to define and design these spaces as a whole, um, understanding though that this the projects will be broken up into phases and or and prioritized. But the idea is that you don't want to um, design just one thing at a time that might preclude you from something you want to do in the future. So this master plan is basically a future development blueprint for the city and can be implemented as you know capital funds are available, go after funding themselves to um, try to implement specific projects within the overall master plan. And again, the thought is absolutely that it unfolds over the course of years. Um, and, you know, and, and again, it's a guide for the city moving forward. So absolutely, I mean, it makes a ton of sense that it will be divided into stages and will give probable costs to allow the city to plan for things. 
Um, and then again, we keep reiterating it, but your public feedback of understanding what you, what a priority to all of you will help guide the city as well. And we'll go into our final report also in terms of prioritizing um, the stages within this project overall. Yeah, that's, that's well said, Lee, and it feeds right into um, funding opportunities that are drawn from this plan. So, um, you know, there, there could be any number of projects that are, that are developed um, of greater or lesser costs, and they're probably going to be re require uh, multiple different funding uh, options to fund that. And that's what we hope our plan can help fortify those applications with meaningful public feedback from you all and um, accurate and well thought out concepts and costs. We did have one, one question come in uh, during that uh, last phase as well. Uh, what are the mechanisms for ensuring that there is significant green space conserved for public use at Harborside um, by the lake? Um, and you know, that's the, the mechanisms are, are kind of this plan. Um, that's what um, we're going to prioritize where you all want to see public space preserved, um, where the committee um, weighs in as well. Um, and that's, th those are the mechanisms at, at this point. So, um, you know, the, this, this is the appropriate venue to, to um, air those concerns or where you think you want, you'd like to see those uh, areas preserved. So um, it's been a discussion point at our committee meetings thus far is, is what areas need to be preserved. How do we reorient the site? As Lee mentioned, maybe moving the vehicular path closer to the railroad to preserve the rest of the space for um, uh, more uh, different uses. So um, that's a good question though. So um, I'll uh, leave the, the Q&A box open for those with other questions, please uh, drop them in there. If, if they come to you as I run through kind of our, our parting thoughts here, um, what we're gonna be working on over the next uh, couple of months before our next public meeting when we'll be cataloging all of your input tonight, you know, some of the comments I know we didn't quite get to in the chat, um, but we will uh, respond to what we can and, and you'll, you'll see that your thoughts were heard um, as we move forward in this process. So that'll be step one. We'll also have that online community survey coming out as we've been talking about as well, which will kind of elaborate on some of our, our questions to you all tonight. We'll be advancing uh, detailed designs a little bit further uh, with your feedback on our concept plans that we showed you tonight and specifically focusing also on the Environmental Learning Center. That'll be a big focus of the next public hearing as well. Um, and as uh, another question came in right on cue, um, we will be holding in-person engagement events uh, later in the winter and the spring. So stay tuned for that. Um, uh, but th those are on the horizon and those are planned. So um, stay alert to the um, the project webpage, which again, um, there's a link here on the screen, but if you do go to the city website, it's under departments and then under uh, community development, you'll see the Harborside master plan once you're in there. Um, we also have that new um, comment function enabled uh, where, you know, if, if you get looking at the plans after they get posted, um, uh, you know, you know, over the next couple of days and you have some other thoughts, feel free to use that comment function uh, to, to give us that. We'll get those comments right away uh, and be able to incorporate that into, into our phase. So, um, and actually uh, we did just get a comment in the chat to put the um, uh, project website in the chat. Can you, can you drop that in Lee for me? I will do my best. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, that's kind of your role as, a, as members of the public is to, to stay engaged, to uh, advocate for others to get engaged. We want to hear from you. Now is, now is the best time when we're still formulating um, how the site's going to look, what the priorities are going to be in our design. So um, please encourage uh, your friends, your, your organizations, um, you know, uh, your coworkers to, to engage with us. Um, and we look forward to hearing from them as well. So um, that's all we had for you tonight. So thank you all for, for sticking with us. Um, if you, we're gonna, I'm gonna stay on here for another few minutes. If there are questions, you can enter them into the chat. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks again. Um, any parting thoughts from you, Lee? 
No, I mean, I thank you all for coming and um, I look forward to your, you know, further input. And again, this has been recorded. So, you know, direct your friends and family and anyone else you may, may be interested to get their input. We, the more we hear from all of you, the better. So I strongly encourage you to, I, I put the um, links into the chat. Hopefully that worked. Um, and again, pass it along to anyone else that you can think of to get. And, and again, we'll, We'll get you informed and we'll get out there to see you in person to continue this discussion. We look forward to it. All said, Lee. Thanks, everybody. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>